What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob, doing the top 10 whiskeys to get you through the apocalypse. Now, there's going to be a couple rules here, and I'm going to kind of explain the scenario to you because it's a really weird concept, and I know you're thinking, okay, what the F is Rob thinking right now? This is a very, very weird video. But bear with me. It's all in good fun. Um, I'm going to give you guys the top 10 whiskeys that are available at my local liquor store that I can literally back up a truck and fill up the trunk if one day I found out that I had 24 hours until the apocalypse and I had to bunker as much whiskey as I could. Uh, I'm responsible for getting the whiskey and there's other people responsible for getting food and medicine and whatever else. I only have the local liquor store to deal with and I can only grab stuff out of that store. So I made a list of 10 whiskeys that would apply to my region, which is the greater Toronto area. And I'm hoping that some people jump in and do this video as well, other YouTubers, and then they can kind of give you an idea of what's available in their area, what they would pick as their top 10. And we'll kind of let this thing evolve, like the top 10 try before you die whiskeys evolved and a whole bunch of different YouTubers did that video. You guys can go back and check that out. I'll put a link to the video at the end of this one. All that being said, the only two rules I actually have here is it has to be under $200 Canadian, which roughly is about $160, $150 American, and it has to be available at your local liquor store. That's it, okay? Here we go. What I decided to do for my honorable mentions is basically whiskeys that come to the LCBO sometimes, but they're not often there, or whiskeys, depending on the time of year, you will be able to land a couple cases of, but as the year progresses, they sell out quickly. Uh, so here we go. Redbreast 12 year old cast strength. That's definitely on the honorable mention list. It's a whiskey that I would definitely stock up. It's great stuff. Um, haven't had a bad one. I've had two different batches so far. I plan to get more in the future. But a Haven 18 is one of those ones that I would always love to have on my bar, but it's not always available at the LCBO. So because it's not always available, it can't be on my list. Although it would easily replace one or two of these whiskeys on my list if it were available at this moment. Glendronic 18 is another one. The Allardyce is one of my favorite whiskeys. You guys know this if you've been following my channel for some time. That's a whiskey that I definitely would have on this list if it was available right now. It's just not, so I can't. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is a whiskey that I would definitely include on this list if it was available all the time. In Ontario, it's rarely available. Pops up maybe once a year, maybe a little bit more than that. Not much, and not much of it is available when it does come up, but it's about $150, which puts it in the perfect range that if it was available, I would definitely stock up on it. Coming to stores very shortly, I bought my bottle in Alberta. It's the Wiser's 23-year-old cast strength. You guys are going to want to get your hands on this if you can. It will be at the LCBO. I would buy a case if I didn't have to have a channel where I would review whiskey on a weekly basis, but that's one of those ones that if tomorrow... The world was going to end. I had a bunker to stash this stuff. I just had to worry about the alcohol. I'm grabbing some Wiser's 23 year old cast strength for sure. Last on the honorable mention list, and I know there's so many that I missed, and I know that all kinds of people from Ontario are screaming, what about this one, what about that one? But to make this somewhat short, uh, I decided to make this last one, the Woodford Double Oaked. I love the way the double oaked idea makes bourbon style whiskeys taste. I love the JD Heritage. I love the Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye. I love the Woodford Double Oaked. I love the idea of them being charred first, then placed into a toasted barrel for extra finishing. It gives a unique taste to the whiskey that you don't get from any other bourbons, which I think is really, really cool. All right, so before I start my top 10 list, I just want to quickly tell you guys that I'm drinking this Glen Scotia. It's 19 years old, just shy of 20 years old. It's a KWM exclusive in Calgary. It's 53.6%. Awesome whiskey. I highly recommend it. I would give this one a 90, no problem. I'm going to sip it as I'm going along here. So here we go. Cheers to the top 10. All right, number 10 is the Weller 107. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, that's not available all the time. That's not really a fair one because it comes and goes. But right now, there's about 200 bottles available at the LCBO. They're probably going to stick around quite some time, in my opinion, because they raised the price at the LCBO from $35 to $65. That's a $30 hike in a matter of a couple months. So I would assume the people that really want that Weller 107 have already received it. There was quite a few bottles that came in. There's still about, like I said, 200, maybe a little bit less than that now. I love my weeded bourbons. 
If I'm going to drink a bourbon, it's usually going to be a weeded bourbon. That's the one that I really like. So if I'm backing up a truck tomorrow to bunker a bunch of whiskey for the apocalypse, it's going to be the Weller 107. So zombies are breaking down the door. I know it's getting crazy around here. I'm not leaving without my number nine, which is the Glendronic 12-year-old. I'm stocking up on this because the Glendronic 12-year-old is a really, really tasty whiskey. Something I should have said earlier is I'm choosing these whiskeys and not the most expensive whiskeys in the store because I'm not taking a chance. It's the apocalypse. Like I said, zombies are breaking down the door. You can't geek out any more than I'm geeking out right now. But the hypothetical is that you need to get reliable whiskey. So I'm going with whiskeys that I know that have been tried, tested, and true. And that's the Glendronic 12-year-old. Just a really well-rounded whiskey, a great everyday sipper. And it's one that I definitely had to have on my list. Number eight is a newer one to the LCBO. It's the Old Paltney 18-year-old. I had a chance to try the entire Old Paltney line. We did that live on a video a few months back. That Old Paltney 18-year-old really stood out to me, especially because it's a newer expression. So it was going to be judged against some of the older whiskeys that are really, really good already. That 18-year-old really stood up to the challenge. I really like that Old Paltney 18-year-old. I will definitely have a few of those in my bar. I will definitely have to bunker that if the world's coming to an end. Number seven is the Amro Fusion. This one keeps popping up on a bunch of my lists. I really like this whiskey. I think it's such a great price at $80. It's just got so much unique characteristic to it that I think I would love to have that as one of my few selections. If I only had 10 whiskeys to go to on a regular basis, I would want it to be something like the Amro Fusion that's very diverse, very different than any of the other whiskeys on this list. You're not getting anything that tastes quite like the Amro Fusion. So that's why this absolutely had to be on my list. Number six is the Ardbeg 10. Now, full disclosure here, I haven't actually reviewed this whiskey. I've tasted it many, many times. It's kind of eluded me in the reviewing category. I don't know why. I just keep pushing it back for whatever reason that happens. If you guys have been following my channel for quite some time, you know that that happens actually a little too often on this channel where I push whiskeys back, I get newer whiskeys, I review them first, and the ones keep getting pushed back to the shelf. But the Ardbeg 10, there's enough reviews out there for you guys to understand why I love it so much. It definitely had to be on this list. It's just a great whiskey. So since I started this channel, I've moved away from the whiskeys that really brought me into whiskey reviewing. One of those was Macallan. Not that I moved away from it in the sense that I don't drink it anymore. I prefer other types of whiskey these days. I prefer its brother company, Highland Park. I really love Springbanks and Longrose and Hazelburns. So if obviously I had my choice, I would just bunker Springbanks, Longrose, Hazelburns and Highland Parks. And those would definitely make up the majority of what I have. But because those are so limited, not too many of them could be on this list today. Um, one whiskey, though, that really stands up to many, in my opinion, and it's because of that high ABV, it's the Macallan Classic Cut. I really love that. They go above 50% on this one. I hope they never change that. I know it's not cast strength. I know that it's not compared to the old sherry casks that Macallan used to produce. We understand this. We don't live in that time anymore, and unfortunately, we're not willing to drop $2,000 to try what those old casts taste like, or not everybody can do that anyway. So, for that reason, the Macallan Classic Cut had to be on this list. It's one of the better expressions for Macallan these days. It's one of the ones that I think you guys would really enjoy if you haven't already, and it had to be my number five. Again, you guys need to check out this whiskey. You can buy it at um, Kensington Wine Market. Really, really good stuff. That's in Calgary. Such a good whiskey. Cast number 359, there are limited bottles, 53.6%, and you do not have to add a drop of water to enjoy this one. It's just that good. Like I said, that's a 90, maybe even a 91. Moving back to the list, coming in at number four is the Highland Park 12. I know, every, literally there's a whole bunch of people watching this video right now that just rolled their eyes. They've probably seen the Highland Park 12 on my videos time after time when it comes to list type videos. I do honestly love this whiskey. I have one bunkered all the time. I think it's really, really great. And what's great about it is the price. $70 at the LCBO It's the 43% version. If you can get this one, I suggest you do because it's actually got a really nice light smoke to it, but everything is just really well balanced. A lot of people are wondering why they didn't put the 18 instead of the 12. The 18 falls just shy of $200, so it actually could have made the list if I really wanted it to. I need to revisit the 18. 
I reviewed it a long time ago. I had a bottle before that that I went through and I wasn't absolutely in love with it at the time. I think if I revisit that whiskey, I'm gonna fall in love with that whiskey. But until I do that, I can't justify putting it on this list and that's why it's a 12 instead of the 18 for me. Number three is the Lagavulin 12 year old. Now, would I have rather this been the Springbank 12 year old? Well, spoiler alert, if Springbank 12 year old was available at the LCBO, number one would have been Springbank 12 year old. This is not Springbank. They're not even the same region. I don't know why I brought it up. Lagavulin 12 year old is an excellent whiskey. If the world was coming to an end, we had a shelter, I was able to fill a bunker in that shelter of at least 10 whiskeys I could stock up on that are available at my local liquor store. Lagavulin 12 year old is always available, which is awesome. And it's excellent whiskey. All right. It's one of those ones that you can go to time after time after time and always get a quality experience. All right. So Lagavulin 12 year old might be higher on some people's lists, but I think number three is pretty high for the last 10 whiskeys I'll ever get to try in my life. Number two is the Glengoyne 18 year old. Now, the Glengoyne 18 year old is $170 at the LCBO. You can get it for much cheaper elsewhere. I think it's a great whiskey. I think it's such an easy sipper. It's one of those whiskeys you can literally have once a day, feel great about it, not have any complaints. Even if the Glengoyne 21 year old was under 200 bucks, I'd choose the 18 instead. I wouldn't spend the extra money on the 21 year old. I think you get everything you need out of Glen Goyne in the 18 year old. It's excellent whiskey. It definitely had to be on this list. That's my number two. All right, so the shelter door is closing. The last one, the most important one that I would have to have in that bunker, in that shelter, is the Anok 18. Now, this is a lot like the Glen Goyne 18, but it's got another 3%. It's unchill filtered, which is a big difference and it's just great whiskey. Honestly, Anak is doing a great job with all their expressions. The 18 and 24 in particular are awesome. This one is a wicked whiskey in my opinion. Now, I know a lot of people are rolling their eyes. They're thinking, what about this? What about that? Like I said, this is only stuff that would be readily available at my local liquor store or at least liquor stores that I can drive to within a 100 kilometer radius. Are these my top 10 favorite whiskeys? No, they're not. Are they the best whiskeys I've ever tried? No, they're not. Do I buy more expensive whiskey on a regular basis? Unfortunately for my wallet, I do. But these are great whiskeys. These are whiskeys that I would swear by that I think that you guys could really enjoy. So with Halloween around the corner, if you haven't grabbed one of these whiskeys on this list, I suggest you go out, grab that whiskey, put on a good zombie movie, enjoy that whiskey while watching, come up with your list, of the top 10 whiskeys you would bunker that you can drive to your local liquor store, throw them in your truck, drive them to your shelter if zombies were crashing down doors and the world was coming to an end. I think we've had enough of this one. I hope you guys enjoy it. I had a lot of fun making this list. I think you guys will have some fun making this list as well. So I would love to know what you guys have to say. And I'm definitely welcoming any whiskey reviewer that wants to do a video like this to go ahead and do it. It'll be a lot of fun seeing other people's lists on YouTube. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you really like the video and you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You guys can also support this channel on Patreon. Cheers.